Frustrations boil over in Pittsburgh as the Cardinals fall to a season low 17 games under 500. Ugh, this is Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Haffron, and I'm a national radio sports anchor. Born and raised in the Lou and a lifetime Cardinals fan, and I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Give us a follow on Twitter at J.D. Sports Radio and at LO underscore Cardinals. That would be the uh, show version of uh, uh, Twitter that we have there. Uh, I want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. You can always find us on YouTube as well. If you go to YouTube, do me a solid. Like, subscribe, comment. That way you can interact with us. Just hit the 7,500 subscriber mark uh, late last night. So that's awesome. Good job, everybody. But make sure you're popping those likes. That way other Cardinals fans can find us and we can all cry together over <laughs> what this horrible season has been. Uh, this is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat, whether it's good or bad, as most of it has been this year. All right, June 17th, guys, June 17th. Let's get this show rolling. That was the last time Adam Wainwright took the mound for the St. Louis Cardinals and then walked away with a win. June 17th, over two months ago. Today is the 23rd. He had a stint on the IL. Nine starts later, and he is still looking for a career win, number 199, and the clock is ticking on whether or not He's going to get to that magic number 200 that only two other Cardinal pitchers have ever reached. Bob Gibson, 251. Jesse Haynes, 210. That's the list. That's it. 200 wins is an uh, elite number. And it's one that Adam Wainwright has been staring down since day one of this horrid 2023 season. When he came back, we were all hoping, hey, 200. I even said that. I'm like, hey, it's in the bag. 200 wins. That shouldn't be a problem for him. What did he have to get? Five? Five total wins? Stuck on three still. On Tuesday night, Adam got off to a very good start. He really did. He, he genuinely looked pretty darn good last night. I, I was quite impressed early on, cruising until the fourth inning. Issues the leadoff walk. We know that's a, a, a big no-no, especially after being up in the count 2 Big no-no. A ground out moves him over, and then, stop me if you've heard this before, a two-out single drives in the first run of the game, making it one to nothing. Pittsburgh. Uh, Richie Palacios, who's played very well. I, I've enjoyed watching him play for the Cardinals since he got brought up. He ties the game up in the top of the fifth inning with his first career home run, a solo shot. We're all knotted up. But then in the fifth inning, the wheels just come off for Wayno, And not just the wheels, the transmission, the bumper, the steering wheel, the whole dang car collapses. And yes, there were a couple of questionable calls by home plate umpire Brennan Miller. Ball three against Capra. Was a, was a strike that was called the ball. And then he hits a single on the next pitch. Then he's got Rivas down one, two. Throws a dot in the bottom of the zone. Doesn't get the call. Called the ball again, despite landing in that little box that we call a strike zone that Brennan Miller is supposed to have memorized. Uh, the next pitch is a ground ball that Edmund can't make the play on despite a strong effort. Now we got first and second and one out when both of them should have been strikeouts. They, they shouldn't even be on the field anymore. Williams then lays down an excellent bunt down the third baseline. Great play there by the Pirates to load him up for a G1 Bay. And he grounds out, scores the run, makes it two to one. Now we got two outs, and per usual this year, that's when things get really, really bad. Reynolds doubles two, uh, they score, and then uh, you get the two run shot by Andrew McCutcheon on what was just an 86 mile per hour meatball right down the pipe. And in a blink, you're looking at a 6-1 to one ball game. Wainwright gives up another double to the next hitter, and that's it. And that's when Ali yanks him. So, uh, genuinely, two missed calls there. Two missed calls lead to a whole mess of an inning. And I'm not putting all the blame on the umpire because you just can't do that because you've still got to go out there and you've got to hit your spots. Like, you still got to do that. But Wayno leaves the mound without a chance to win again, and the end line, even after four very strong innings, the end line looks gross again. 
It looks like he got his butt kicked again, which he did, but it was just one really bad inning. Uh, after the game, Wayno spoke to the media saying, I'm just really disappointed. I was in complete control and then just let it get away there. I don't know what to tell you. I don't, I don't know what to tell our fans. What do I tell them? What can I say? And it's a shame that the, the things unraveled so quickly because of those missed calls. But let's also point out that the offense still has to score runs, okay? Even if Adam went through the rest of the game and only gave up a couple of more runs, the offense still has to do their job as well to win ball games. And again, they, they continue to struggle in this one. They were just one for 11 with runners in scoring position. They left nine guys on base, shorthanded or not. And I know that they are, but these are some ugly, ugly numbers being put up, being put up by this offense. And with the, the game still in the balance in the seventh inning, that's when sparks really began to fly. Um, because you had a six to three ball game at this point, Wilson Contreras comes up two outs, bases are loaded. And then we get another questionable call by the home plate umpire. It wasn't a strike. It really wasn't puts Wilson behind in the count. One, two, though, he swings at uh, a pitch up at his eyes on the next one strike three. The threat is squashed, and Willie says, enough is enough, and he just lets he just lets the ump have it. Very, very demonstrative, if you will, as he uh, draws out what he feels is the strike zone in the dirt. He slams his bat. He tosses his helmet in the uh, direction of the umpire. Obviously, he got ejected, but he had every right to be upset. Every right to be upset because the strike call was wrong. It was, and it wasn't a borderline call where you're like, oh man, I can see how you, no, it was a terrible call. The ball is clearly low by a few inches. And to have Adam Wainwright earlier in the game when Wilson Contreras is your catcher and he sees his guy not getting those calls earlier in the game, which led to the really ugly inning. Then you get the Wilson Contreras, he gets called on that pitch that it's a strike and you can understand why somebody who's back there with that umpire all night gets a little upset about it. And I don't blame him. I mean, it's a horrible call. That's all you can say about it. You can't put everything on the umpire, but at the same time, he kind of deserves it in this situation. So Willie gets tossed and then Ollie gets tossed and one inning later, another low third strike is called on Jordan Walker and he gets ejected. But the crappy part of this one is that Walker is literally walking to the dugout when it happens, walking to the dugout. And I don't know what he said. I, you know, I can't make out what his lips say. I mean, it was kind of a wide angle when you see him on the, on the telecast that he's walking away and he doesn't appear to be chirping anything crazy. I mean, Jordan Walker doesn't, he's not really that kind of guy. He wanted to snap his bat over his helmet when the strike call was made, but he brought it all in, walked away. And as he's walking away, doesn't appear to be showing up the ump or anything or doing anything that would warrant, in my opinion, an ejection. But just another umpire thinks we're all there to watch him call balls and strikes instead, I guess. And he thumbs Jordan, Jordan Walker, kicks him out. He's like, you're done. Three ejections just like that. Cardinals lose this one six to three. And they drop to 0 and 5 against Pittsburgh on the year, which is what? You can't beat Pittsburgh. They've now lost six of seven, and in those seven games, the Cardinals have been outscored 52 to 16. Seven of those 16 runs came in their only win on Sunday when they when they beat the Mets. So it's been ugly in all ways, shapes, and forms. I mean, the pitching is falling apart. The hitting isn't there. Like, it, it is just gruesome out there. Watching Cardinal baseball right now is ugly. It is not a lot of fun. And uh, the hits just kept on coming. On Tuesday, it was announced that another player is headed to the injured list because of, guess what? A back injury. Another back injury. We're going to discuss it next on Locked on Cardinals. For a championship team, it's all about making sure that every player is a perfect fit. And it's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every single part needs to fit just right. It's like putting a puzzle together. You can't take a piece that doesn't fit, try to jam it in there and make the puzzle look right and be presentable. It's not how it works. Same thing with your car. You can't just jam random parts in there and expect it to work the way it's supposed to. So the next time you need parts and accessories, Head to eBay Motors. This is the easy part, guys. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure that every part you need fits right, and it will fit right the first time around. You don't have to keep switching them out. Just add your ride to my garage, and then look for the green check 
That's the proof. That's where it says, oh, yes, that is the exact part that you need to uh, know that that is the one that's going to fit. And if it doesn't, you're going to get your money back. They're not going to just hose you with it and go, well, tough to be you. No, they're going to get your money back to you. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game. And when you shop on eBay Motors, they've got over 122 million parts to choose from. You'll be back in the game in no time. Whatever car issue you're dealing with, they've got you covered. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. The Cardinals will battle the Pirates again today, and you can catch every pitch of the Cardinals' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. Again, thank you for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. You can leave comments on YouTube. You can always tweet at me. Your feedback is always welcome and encouraged because these are uh, the times of the year when the team's not good. We need each other. We need each other, Cardinal Nation, because it is tough, and we just seem to keep getting more and more bad news as we move on through August, and we've still got all of September to get through. Let's do it together, shall we? Tuesday afternoon, the news broke. Bad news that Matthew Libertor is now headed back to the 15-day IL due to back tightness. He injured his back during a uh, recent weightlifting session and had his scheduled start pushed back from Monday to Wednesday. When the tightness failed to improve, the Cardinals made the move. It's likely going to cost Libertor two, maybe three starts as we wind down the final 35 games of the season. And and this stinks, man. Like, this really, really stinks. Like, big use baby diaper filled with Indian food type of stink. Because I was one of the guys hoping that Libby would use this time at the end of the season where there's really nothing to play for, but, you know, pride. And because you want to work on your craft and get better. But this was going to be the time where he was able to solidify a spot in the rotation for next year. He has that incredible game against the Rays where we finally saw how good he really could be. And then we saw him crash back to earth against the Oakland A's. So you got to find the balance, right? You got to find somewhere in between there is the consistency that you're looking for from Matthew Libertor. It's the consistency that all pitchers are looking for. You you know you're not always going to be the greatest of greats, but you never want to drop down to the lowest of lows either. You want to be right there in the middle, give your team a chance to win. So, um, you know, finding that balance, correcting the mistakes that he made in Oakland, because when you heard the interview and I'm talking about the different things that went wrong, you can tell that he knows what's going on and that You want to see him get back out on the mound and show the ability to learn from that ugly start as well as the good ones and then continue to progress as a starting pitcher in this league, which is what the journey of the rest of this season is going to be for a lot of these guys, you know, Um, talking about uh, Drew Rahm the other night. Can he learn from what went wrong to be a better pitcher the next time he goes out on the mound? You know, same for any of these young guys. Mason went at the play. Jordan Walker at the play. Can they learn from bad at bats and get better because of that? That's what the rest of the season is about. And instead, we don't know if we're actually going to see Matthew Libertor again this year. That's the reality. And I'm not saying that they are going up out for the year, possibly. I'm just saying it doesn't sound like they know how long he's going to be out exactly. You know, uh, did we think Ryan Helsley would be out as long as he's been? We'll have more on him a little bit later, but we just don't know how well this injury will respond to treatment. It clearly wasn't healing all that well, or he wouldn't be on the IL right now. Now, I did see that, you know, they were just kind of being precautious here and they didn't want to, um, you know, push anything and have him go out there and then it tighten up on him and then he has to leave the game anyway. So I get it. You don't want to you don't want to push these guys at the moment. But oddly, it's another back injury to go along with uh, the slew of back injuries that has attacked the Cardinals this year. Uh, Nolan Gorman out with back problems right now. Tyler O'Neill had been missing a ton of this season because guess what? A back problem. Remember in spring training, Paul DeYoung dealt with a back problem. Arenado has had a few flare-ups where he's had to miss a couple games uh, and leave games because of his back. Newt. You remember he crashed in the wall, back spasms, just another back injury. It really has become a little bit alarming to me that these guys are all dealing with back injuries, you know? Um, 
Arenado, because here's the thing, Arenado in his 30s, he's out there every day. You can understand if uh, tightens up a little bit. You're okay. You understand that. Uh, Paul DeYoung. By the way, new San Francisco giant Paul DeYoung. In case you guys didn't hear about that, the Giants scooped him up yesterday after he was DFA'd by Toronto and uh, ultimately released. Uh, a reminder that the Cardinals are still responsible for the buyouts and the contract options for uh, this year and next year, and they will pay half of his remaining salary after the trade deadline. But the young back in the major leagues again with the San Francisco Giants, who were uh, reportedly one of the teams that tried to trade for him at the deadline anyway. So um, good luck to him. Good luck to him. We hope it goes better than it did in Toronto because that was bad. Uh, but DeYoung, 30 years old, back stuff happens, right? Let's get back on track here. Back stuff, it'll happen to you at a certain age. And infielders, you know, you're hunched over a lot. I, I can understand that. But to have O'Neal go down for, uh, for a long time with his back. Gorman has been battling these back issues all year. And now you've got Libertor. And I'm not an athletic trainer. You know, I like to work out. And I like to stay in shape. Nowhere near the level of what these guys have to do, but something needs to be changed or tweaked because this seems a bit silly at this point that these guys who are in their 20s are consistently dealing with back issues. Like, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, I was listening to 590 KFNS. Frank Cusimano, one of my faves, uh, was on, and he was talking to uh, former Cardinal Andy Van Slyke, who, if you've never listened to them, you really should because Van Slyke does not pull any punches. Like, my dude just comes out raging every day and is dead honest about his opinions on everything with the Cardinals. There is no sugarcoating going on. So might want to check them out. But anyway, they were chatting about weightlifting during the season. And, uh, you know, it was interesting to hear Van Slyke's take on, on lifting. Granted, it was a different era when he played where, you know, the guys weren't, you know, big, you know, there's a lot of big dudes in baseball now that look like football players with the amount of uh, workouts that they do. Van Slyke was always in tremendous shape. But um, he was talking about how he didn't like the idea of lifting during the season. You know, not, uh, you know, you lift to stay in shape or whatever, but nothing where, you know, you're putting a lot of weight on and stuff. Like, you're not trying to build mass during the season. Um, he just said deadlifting is one of those exercises that you normally didn't do during the season. Now, Libertor did say that he wasn't hoisting much weight when the injury occurred, but it happened all the same while he was deadlifting. And I, I know the Cardinals have Libby on this on this workout regimen to, to build the strength in his legs and his core and everything to uh, to keep that velo up consistently during games. That was something that when he's up a tick or two around like 94, 95, he's an entirely different pitcher than when he's sitting 91, 92. Like the results are what they are. It's the, the proof's in the pudding. And um, that's why they're having him do this stuff. And I get it. But his velo ain't going anywhere if he's hurt doing certain exercises. So I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what happens. I just It just seems odd to me that the team's dealing with as many back issues as they've had this year. So um, in the corresponding move, the team called up Jacob Barnes from Memphis. Barnes, 33 years old, signed a minor league deal last month after getting released by the Phillies organization. He's appeared in 252 major league games with the Brewers, Royals, Angels, Mets, Blue Jays, Tigers, and Yankees. This year, he appeared in 35 minor league games with Round Rock, Lehigh Valley, and Memphis. He's gone one and two with a 2.47 ERA. Was pitching well at Memphis uh, since they got him. Uh, did get into last night's game, got out the got out the only two hitters that he faced. So uh, that's good news. So welcome, Mr. Barnes. Uh, but you can add Libby to the list of the wounded that includes Dylan Carlson, Lars Newtbar, Brennan Donovan, Stephen Matz, Nolan Gorman, Jake Woodford, Packy Naughton, Wilking Rodriguez, who we never got to see, uh, and of course Ryan Helsley. That's uh, that's a lot of very important pieces that are not available to contribute to your team right now. And you're seeing the impact of these people missing by the amount of losses that are continually, continuously adding up here in the month of August. Um, the 72 losses for the Cardinals is more or equal to the number of losses they had for the entire season in eight of the last 13 full seasons since 2009. I mean, this is this is crazy that they are this bad. Uh, speaking of Brian Helsley, I mentioned uh, we're going to talk about him. We got an update on his arm issue. We'll talk about all of that coming up next on Locked on Cardinals.
Cardinals continue their road trip and face the Pirates today, hoping to avoid the sweep. And you can catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app to search Cardinals. Uh, Cardinals closer, Ryan Helsley. Uh, mentioned him a few moments ago. Um, underwent another round of MRIs on his sore flexor tendon and the ulnar collateral ligament in his right arm. And it's been revealed that there was no structural damage. So that is great news. But it still doesn't explain why, oh, why he still has pain in his arm. So I'm still very much concerned there. Uh, Helsley's been on the injured list since June 10th with tightness in the right forearm, has repeatedly felt more pain and tightness in his arm following rehab outings. So it keeps coming back. But the latest clean MRI means Helsley can resume pitching with hopes of rejoining the Cardinals before the end of the season. Uh, he'll reportedly throw a bullpen session in St. Louis. <coughs> excuse me in the coming days, and then start another rehab session with Memphis. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that surgery is not, doesn't appear to be on the table right now, because if that's the case, you wouldn't see him until probably 2025. Like, I mean, we're at the back end of August here. If you go under the knife, next year is certainly probably gone. And Helsley's dealt with these arm issues for a lot of years, and, and it may surprise you to learn that despite only being on the Cardinals major league roster since 2019, so five years, uh, Helsley is 29 years old, 29 years old. Like this is not some guy who came up when he was 21, 22. Uh, he just turned 29, in fact, in July. So this is not some young kid dealing with this stuff anymore. He's going to be 30 next year. And I wanted to point that out because when I think of Helsley, I look at him and I always think like he's like in his mid twenties and he's not. That is not the case at all. Like, he didn't come up to the major leagues until he was 24 years old. So, a lot of arm issues, and he's going to be hitting 30 here soon. So, um, just something to think about. Will we see him again this year? I, I certainly have my doubts about that because, um, again, there's no need to push anybody this year. But I hope he gets the treatment that he needs because this bullpen, which was bad when he was in it, Got even worse when he was gone and, you know, you have, you no longer have Jordan Hicks or Chris Stratton. Drew Verhagen is going to be a free agent after the season. I probably not going to bring him back. As much as we continue to, to give attention to the starting rotation and how they're going to need three guys, which is what we keep being told, the three guys are going to have to fill that sucker. The bullpen is looking mighty empty as well and is going to need some arms. And if Ryan Helsley cannot be relied on for next year, that is another massive hole that they still have to fill. Now, there's speculation that perhaps they go and, and Jordan Hicks will come back. I, I don't know if that's the case. Usually odds are when a guy gets traded away, he does not come back to that team, but we'll see. But Jamo Zalok has a lot of work to do to plug all of these holes in the pitching staff that has sunk this 2023 season and threatens to have it remain sunk and at the bottom of the NL Central and all of the National League in 2024 if some major moves are not made this offseason. Uh, I do want to end on a good note because it's like when you go to bed at night, you shouldn't go to bed angry. Let's not go to let's not end the show uh, on bad news. Let's end it on a good one. Uh, Takoa Roby, the team's, uh, I believe, number five ranked prospect whom they received from Texas at the trade deadline in that Jordan Montgomery, Chris Stratton deal joined class AA Springfield this week, and he is set to make his debut for uh, Springfield on Saturday. So that's awesome news. He's been hurt since they they made the deal. They knew he was hurt when they made the deal. They knew it was nothing serious. Uh, Mo even said we expect him to pitch competitively uh, at some point this year, and uh, it's great to hear that he's going to be back on the mound in live games. So good news there for Tacoa Roby. We're anxious to see uh, what he can do uh, in a Cardinals uniform. All right, thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. Be sure to catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast for this finale of the series against the Pirates today and then the upcoming series with the Phillies with SiriusXM on the SXM map. Just search Cardinals. Uh, Zach Thompson will be on the mound today. Um, it's an early start today, guys, so get ready. He'll be back on the bumps. Been pretty sharp in uh, his outings the last couple of times he's hit the mound, so we hope that progression continues today. Uh, the Cardinals will try to avoid the sweep, as weird as that sounds. Against the Pirates, Luis Ortiz, who has not been all that good this year. So hopefully the offense can wake up against him kind of like they did uh, against the Mets when they were facing 
the broom. First pitch today, 1135 St. Louis time. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Help our channel and love for the Cardinals grow. We'll see you next time on Lockdown Cardinals. You guys are the best fans in baseball. Don't you forget.